This video is going to be about fixed exchange rates. So first off, what is a fixed exchange rate? It's a specific type of managed exchange rate in which the government tries to keep the exchange rate with another constant, thus trying to negate the effects of a change in exchange rates, which we've covered in another video. Numerically, holding constant the exchange rate through interventionist policies. So if the United States wants to keep a, an exchange rate with Japan at 1 U.S. dollars equals 5 yen, they must manipulate their supply and demand for currencies in order to keep that the same. So if 1 U.S. dollar buys 6 yen, the U.S. has to intervene and get it back to 1 U.S. dollar to 5 yen. Now with fixed exchange rates, we don't, we don't talk about appreciation and depreciation, we talk about devaluation and revaluation, which is pretty much the same thing as appreciate and depreciate, except for it's dealing with a fixed exchange rate. So devaluation is when a, per, a country purposefully decreases its rate, revaluation is when a country purposefully increases its exchange rate. And these are slightly different, like I said, than appreciation and depreciation, but those refer more specifically to in a free-floating exchange rate system. There are lots of countries around the world that fix their exchange rate to one currency or another. Remember that exchange rate is the price of a currency in terms of another. So they're not fixing against all exchange rates. They're just going to maybe fix them, or what they call pegging, to one currency. So, for example, many of these countries on the list either peg, most often, peg to the U.S. dollar or the Great British Pound. Those tend to be the two most commonly pegged uh, exchange rates. And so that's what they do. They just keep that exchange rate constant through intervention, and then you know they're most focused on that partnership, that, that side of the deal. So more than likely, they probably import and or export lots of goods to the United States or Great Britain, and so that's why they end up pegging or fixing their exchange rate with that country. So while most countries don't bother with fixing their exchange rate, there are reasons that a country might want to. So we've talked about the effects of an appreciating or depreciating currency, and in this case it's revaluating or devaluating. But the reasons for fixing the exchange rate include to negate the effects of a free-floating exchange rate. So there might be you know, giant swings in exports and import values, and so that's one reason to fix the exchange rate. There's a higher degree of certainty about the future exchange rate, so countries don't have to speculate as much in the future in terms of like, well, when are we going to sell more or less? They don't have to worry about that. It blocks out that currency speculation. And inflation is kept low domestically because with changes in inflation, that's going to lead to changes in exchange rates. So that is another benefit is inflation is kept low within that country. So now to the how does a country fix, it, fix its exchange rate. So first off, the central bank could buy or sell its reserves of foreign currency. So the central bank more than likely holds the foreign currency, you know, in some denomination, maybe $100 million, a billion dollars or more, or whatever the currency is, a pounds. And so they just simply buy or sell it on the open market, and that's how it's going to raise or lower the exchange rate. The central bank or government could increase or decrease interest rates domestically to entice or dissuade foreign investment in financial assets. They could increase or decrease borrowing from abroad. So depending on which way they want the exchange rate to move, they're either going to borrow more from overseas or less, depending. Or to make limit on imports, which then is going to help you know, keep the exchange rate relatively constant if you're able to limit imports and you know, we talk about demand for that currency, with less imports comes less demand for the currency. And so that might be a way through a maybe a tariff or a quota, for example. Now, there are many drawbacks to a fixed exchange rate system. There's a need for constant intervention. You know, the, it has to be constantly monitored and changed the policies on you know, a somewhat regular basis in order to keep the exchange rate constant. There's more reliance on the government to do what's right and to make the right choices in terms of what is going to help the country, because ultimately that's probably why they're fixing the exchange rate, is to help production and help the country. And that just creates more of a reliance on government rather than free market strategies. There's the loss of monetary policy because when you're trying to fix the exchange rate, you don't want to manipulate the interest rates because that's going to change the exchange rate. 
and the possible local recessions due to fiscal policy measures needed to keep fixed exchange rates. So, you know, the country is really losing a lot of flexibility domestically in trying to look at the big picture. So let's take a look at what might happen for a fixed exchange rate for the U.S. dollar. So let's say here's the current exchange rate 1, which is $1 equals 1 Great British Pound. So we're deciding to peg or fix the exchange rate of, of 1 to 1 with the Great British Pound. So let's see that America notices a demand increase for the U.S. dollar. So the exchange rate is going to go up, so the U.S. dollar has appreciated because it is freely floating, and then in the long run they're, they're going to fix it back to normal. So with that change of demand increasing for the currency, the U.S. government, whichever entity, is going to have to find a way to do one of two things. Because now the exchange rate is higher, they're either going to have to find a way to reduce demand and just simply would shift it back, so just kind of moving the demand curve back to D1. So reducing demand for the U.S. dollar, getting the exchange rate back to exchange rate 1. Or the other option would be to decrease or increase the supply of the currency. So that's going to get it back to the exchange rate there as well. So either way, whether it's reducing demand back to D1 or increasing supply or some combination, they're going to want to get the exchange rate back to a one-to-one, -one, which is going to take some careful manipulation of the money supply or um, the interest rates or lots of different things, and that becomes problematic because there's a lot of moving pieces in the economy, and how do we get it back to exactly one-to-one -one or at least very, very close? it's going to take a lot of work and manipulation to do that. And so that's another one of the drawbacks is, you know, it's, pretty, it's a pretty inexact science and lots of things can affect the exchange rate.